Welcome to this video tutorial introducing the MetaView Analytics solution and MetaView Analytics for trunk routing. In this video we're going to be looking at the following. We'll start by explaining the value offered by Analytics for trunk routing. We'll introduce the new MetaView Analytics solution and talk about how trunk routing analytics fits within this. We'll then spend the majority of the time giving a demo of the Metaswitch trunk routing application to illustrate both the general value that it delivers and some of the specific use cases that are supported out of the box. So why do you need trunk routing analytics? Outbound trunk routing is a critical part of your service. Delivering a high quality, cost effective service to your customers relies on both making the right outbound trunk routing decisions and the carriers that you choose to route your calls providing a high quality service to you. You need tools that allow you to ensure that all aspects of your outbound trunk routing are performing optimally and to quickly and easily identify and troubleshoot issues as they arise. Trunk routing analytics works alongside other features in the MetaSwitch product set to enable you to achieve this. Traditional statistics and alarms on your switches will highlight if, say, a large percentage of calls are failing on a given trunk group. But these high-level stats don't give the detail behind the headlines. For example, they don't show why a large percentage of calls on a trunk group have suddenly started failing. And there are other use cases that require more flexible and granular insights than can be provided by traditional fixed scope statistics. This is where analytics comes in. Suppose that one of the carriers you use is generally good, but regularly fails to connect calls to a particular geographic destination. Statistics will tell you that overall you have high call completion rates on the trunk group to that carrier. Analytics will show you that in fact, beneath that headline number, some destinations still have poor completion rates. It will also show you what ultimately happens on calls to those destinations. Do they fail completely or do they get successfully connected via an alternate carrier? Or similarly, suppose that something about the way you are signalling calls means that, irrespective of which carrier you use, you are regularly failing to connect calls to a given destination country, perhaps because of a misconfiguration in your number validation and routing logic. If the number of calls to that country is small, this won't have a significant impact on the high-level metrics, but it will still be visible in analytics. Or suppose a radio station starts having an hourly phone-in, which results in a specific trunk group getting briefly overloaded. High-level stats might show you that the trunk group is experiencing intermittent bursts of failing calls. Analytics would let you quickly see that this is because there are large bursts of calls to one particular number at 10 minutes past each hour, which is overloading the trunk group. And again, analytics will give you further insight here, such as what happens to calls when this trunk group is out of capacity, and what other types of calls are impacted. Or finally, suppose that you have a complex setup where calls are expected to regularly fall back to secondary routes. High-level stats will show you how many calls get attempted on each trunk group, and that, for each trunk group, significant percentages of call attempts are failing, as you would expect. Analytics will offer you detailed insight into what rerouting is happening, for example, highlighting classes of calls that are regularly getting rerouted to particularly expensive backup trunk groups, and allowing you to distinguish between calls that fail on a trunk group and then get successfully rerouted, versus calls that end up failing completely. These are just a few examples. Trunk routing analytics allows for very flexible and fine-grained analysis of outbound trunk routing across a range of different dimensions, allowing you to easily identify classes of calls that are of interest. Finally, Trunk Routing Analytics integrates with your Service Assurance Server, SAS, to offer a best of both worlds solution, combining powerful analytics capabilities with the ability to drill down all the way to individual calls and the information available in SAS, such as detailed call logs and protocol flows. MetaView Analytics for Trunk Routing is part of the broader MetaView Analytics solution. So we'll start with a quick overview of the solution as a whole, and that starts by recapping the existing role played by the MetaView Service Assurance Server. The MetaView Service Assurance Server already plays a key role in MetaSwitch deployments, 
acting as a centralized repository for real-time, always-on diagnostic data, showing everything from external protocol flows through to detailed diagnostic logs. In theory, this data could provide a wealth of analytics insight, but SAS is designed to fulfill a specific role in a highly optimized fashion. Specifically, it's highly optimized for diagnostics use cases. It can store huge quantities of data very efficiently, but it's only designed to retrieve information about individual calls. It can't run statistical queries over large amounts of data without massively impacting its primary role. That's where the MetaView Analytics solution comes in. The MetaView Analytics solution is made up of two parts. The first part is a new SAS Analytics API. This allows specific subsets of data to be streamed in real time from SAS to an external analytics platform for storage and analysis. This gives us access to the data within SAS that is particularly valuable from an analytics perspective, whilst reducing the total data volume to a level that is manageable for bulk analysis. It also leverages the value in SAS as a centralized point in the network that can provide this data whilst offloading the actual analysis of the data to another platform to avoid impacting SAS's primary diagnostic functionality. The second part is the analytics platform itself. Service providers bring their own analytics platform. However, Metaswitch recommend using Splunk. Splunk is a complete analytics solution, providing everything from the data storage layer through to powerful visualization and dashboarding technology and the ability to run ad hoc queries. It runs on a wide range of hardware, including virtual machines, is highly scalable and can be installed up and running in a matter of minutes. It also supports integration of data from a wide range of other data sources and provides the ability to run queries and correlate data across multiple of these simultaneously. Assuming you do choose to use Splunk as your analytics platform, Metaswitch also offer Splunk applications for each analytics data type. Applications within Splunk are packages of queries, dashboards and reports, which can be installed in a single click. Our MetaView Analytics apps demonstrate how to use the underlying data stream and address key mainline analytics use cases out of the box. But you aren't limited to these. Splunk allows you to extend these applications by writing your own queries and building your own dashboards, allowing you to get the specific answers that you need from your data. If you wish to customize the Splunk applications, you can either do this yourself or employ Metaswitch to do this work as professional services. If you license and enable MetaView Analytics for Trunk Routing on your Service Assurance server, then an event will be streamed on the SAS Analytics interface for each call that your switches attempt to route over an outbound trunk group. These events contain rich information about the call including each trunk group that the switch attempted to route the call over and what the outcome of the attempt was in each case, including information about detailed response codes. The destination directory number as well as the original requested directory number and dialed digits. Originating information about the call leg, such as originating trunk group or subscriber group. Information about the final call outcome, for example whether it was connected and if so its duration additional signaled information such as carrier codes or SIP destination trunk group parameters, and user-defined attributes that your switch has assigned to the call in number validation or routing. The Metaswitch Trunk Routing Splunk application uses this data stream to deliver rich insights and troubleshooting capabilities. Looking at the application is a great way to understand the general value that this data offers, as well as the functionality that you will get out of the box with Splunk. The core of the application is the outbound trunk routing dashboard. This is designed to be very generic and flexible, allowing it to address a wide range of analysis and troubleshooting use cases. The data we're looking at in this demonstration is real-world field data that has been anonymized. So, for example, the directory numbers are fictional and the destination countries have been altered, but the patterns and distributions of call outcomes represent a real-world network. We'll start with a brief tour of the dashboard contents and then we'll look at some concrete example of the insights it can deliver. 
At the top of the screen are a range of filters that allow you to identify a particular subset of calls that you are interested in. First, you can choose the time range that you're interested in. Picking from a selection of predefined periods or filtering on any date time range of your choice. You can then filter on a wide range of different aspects of the outbound call. For example, the first trunk group that the call was routed over and the outcome of that attempt, or the final trunk group that the call was routed over and the outcome, the destination country, the originating subscriber group or trunk, or user defined attributes set in your number validation or routing tables or you can choose to filter on other freeform criteria, perhaps filtering on destination numbers starting with a given prefix. We then see some high-level summary stats for the dataset. Here we see that there were a little over 1.1 million calls during the time period we are looking at. The first set of columns then show what happened when we attempted to route the call over its first choice trunk group. Here we see that around 80% of calls connected successfully over their first choice trunk group. For 3.5% of calls, the attempt to route them over their first choice trunk group failed. Failure here is determined by looking at the specific release code returned by the remote switch. Calls that don't connect, for example, due to no answer, user busy or user rejected, are still considered successful. Examples of calls that are treated as failures would be those failing due to reasons like unallocated number, interworking error, or no route to destination. 1.3% of calls connected but were then released for a reason that we considered to be a failure, 6% of the calls that connected lasted less than 5 seconds, and in 0.1% of cases the first choice trunk group was skipped locally due to lack of capacity or congestion. When the attempt to route the call over the first choice trunk group fails, then depending on the failure reason, the switch may consider the call to be reroutable. For example, there's no point rerouting a call that fails due to unallocated number, but it may be worth trying to reroute a call that fails due to no circuit available. The remaining columns show what happens in the cases where the first choice trunk group failed for a reason that is considered reroutable. Here we see that 4% of such calls were successfully connected via an alternative route, but in most cases, either all alternatives routes failed too, or there were no alternative routes to try. Moving on down the page, you can choose how you want to divide up the calls for further analysis, choosing from the same attributes that are available for filtering. Here for example, we're analysing calls based on their first choice trunk group. The dashboard then goes on to offer us a number of different visualizations of the data. First, we can see a table showing the same statistics that we looked at above, but split by your chosen dimension. Sorting in this table gives a quick way of finding the categories of calls with, say, the most calls or the highest percentage of failures. Moving on down, we see similar information presented as a pie chart, a time chart, and as a bubble chart. In the bubble chart, we can simultaneously see how many calls there are for each value of the split attribute, this is shown by the size of each bubble, and what percentage of those calls ultimately failed to be routed successfully, this is shown by the colour of each bubble, pure red indicates that all calls failed, and pure green indicates that all calls were successful. This allows you to very quickly identify categories of calls that are simultaneously large and have poor completion rates. Here we see that the most common first choice trunk groups all result in fairly high call success rates, with trunk group 1000 being the most heavily used trunk group that has a lower success rate. Finally, at the bottom of the page are a couple more reports that don't open by default in order to improve page load time. Destination directory number analysis shows the number of calls in the current dataset that are routed to each destination number. Finally, the map shows how calls are distributed by destination country. Each country displays as a pie chart where the size of the pie represents the number of calls routed to that country and the individual segments represent the different call outcomes. Here we can see that the vast majority of calls are to the US and these nearly all complete successfully. But some other countries, like Italy and China, 
have lower success rates. Throughout the application, contact sensitive help is available anywhere you see the blue information icon. Let's now take a look at some specific examples of the insights that this dashboard gives us into the network represented by this dataset. We'll start by splitting the data by first choice trunk group release reason. As we've already seen, this service provider has a high percentage of successful call completion, and indeed, most calls complete successfully on their first choice trunk group. However, there are still significant percentages of calls that fail and we can see the most common reasons here. A number of calls are failing due to no circuit or channel available. This indicates that the remote switch doesn't have sufficient capacity to complete the call. If we click on this row in the table, then this will automatically be added as a filter criteria and the page will reload. So now we're just looking at calls where the first choice trunk group fails with no circuit or channel available. Next, let's split this set of calls by first choice trunk group. We can see that such errors are spread across a range of different trunk groups and generally result in the call failing completely rather than being successfully rerouted. The time chart though instantly highlights something interesting. There are noticeable spikes in the failures on trunk group 1000. Furthermore, these are typically happening at 10 minutes past the hour. If we click on this trunk group, then again, it will automatically be added to the filter criteria. So now we're only seeing calls where the first choice trunk group is 1000 and the attempt to use this trunk group is failing due to no circuit or channel available. So why are we getting these spikes? If we look at the destination directory number table, then we quickly see that nearly all of these calls are to a single directory number. In this anonymized data, this number doesn't mean anything in particular. However, in the original data, this was the number of a local radio station, which it turns out was having a phone in at 10 minutes past the hour. Unfortunately, this was overloading the route, resulting in both calls to this phone in failing but also calls to other numbers that happen to be using this trunk group. Once an issue like this has been identified, sensible action can then be taken, such as routing calls to this number over a choke trunk to prevent them impacting other calls. Clearing the filters and going back to the first trunk group release reasons, we might also decide to investigate the large number of calls failing due to interworking errors. If we filter on these and then split by first choice destination trunk group, we again see spikes in the rate of failures. Strangely, these are again at 10 minutes past the hour, but on a different trunk group and apparently completely unrelated to the spikes we saw just now. Filtering on this trunk group and splitting by, say, destination country, we see that these errors are impacting calls to a wide range of countries and a wide range of directory numbers with no obvious common cause. Analytics can't give us much further insight into the cause of the failures at this stage. We need to take a look at some sample calls and find out why they are failing. This is where the SAS integration comes in. Clicking on the table at the top of the page brings up a new tab showing a list of calls that meet the current filter criteria. From here, we can see the CDRs that were generated for the calls, which in other scenarios may provide further insight. But we can also click on any call to open it in SAS. The sample data we're looking at here has been anonymized and so the call we're showing here in SAS is just a sample to illustrate the data that would be available. SAS provides both detailed low-level diagnostic information for the call and also detailed protocol flows. Here we would expect there to be information in SAS that gives insight into why these errors are occurring. 
Going back to analytics, we noted earlier that some countries seem to have a high call failure rate. If we go back to our main dashboard and split calls by destination country, we can look into this further. Sorting the table by percentage of calls that failed, we see that some countries have very high call failure rates, but only low numbers of calls in this sample data. If we page down, then the first country we find that has both a significant number of calls and a high failure rate is Mexico. Filtering on calls to Mexico and splitting by final call release reason, we find that most failing calls are failing due to either unallocated number or invalid number format. If we filter on, say, unallocated number and look at the actual directory numbers being dialed, we find there are a spread of numbers. This isn't just one number being called repeatedly. Again, with this anonymized data, we can't see anything else interesting here. However, with the original data, it was immediately apparent by looking at the requested address column, which contains the dialed digits, that the issue here was caused by a misconfiguration in number validation and routing. One particular area code in the US was getting wrongly interpreted as a country code. The calls that were failing weren't international calls at all. They were national calls which the switch was routing incorrectly. As a final example, let's take a look at which trunk groups are getting most heavily used as backup routes. To do this, we filter on calls that were successfully rerouted and then split by final destination trunk group. Now in the table, we have a column which shows for each trunk group the hours of calls connected where the trunk group was not the first choice route. As we've already seen, there isn't a lot of rerouting in this particular dataset. Most calls succeed via their first choice trunk group. However, we can see that the most heavily used alternative trunk group is 2020. Suppose that the hours of calls being rerouted here were higher, or that we know this is a particularly expensive route. We might then want to know where these calls should have been going, and why they weren't succeeding on their first choice trunk group. To find out this, we filter on calls that ended up using trunk group 2020 and split by first choice trunk group. The most common first choice trunk group was 2110. If we drill down on these calls and split by first choice trunk group release reason, we find that the most common failure reason is service or option not available. At this point, we'd want to bring up the list of calls in this category and drill down into SAS to get more information about what's causing this particular set of errors on this trunk group. The second dashboard provided by the trunk routing application is a real-time dashboard. This dashboard is designed to give you a real-time, high-level view of your outbound trunk routing, suitable for displaying in, say, your network operation center. By default, the dashboard shows activity over the last 30 seconds, continuously updated in real time. The idea is to provide a single screen view that quickly alerts you to changes in call failure rate, either globally, by geographic destination, or per trunk group. Here we see that everything looks reasonably healthy, but let's see what happens if we simulate calls starting to fail on a specific trunk group, say trunk group 5004. Straight away we see the column representing trunk group 5004 is starting to turn red, and after 30 seconds we'll see that it has changed completely. The dashboard also shows the top destination directory numbers, allowing you to quickly spot if, say, an unexpected X-Factor style event is suddenly resulting in unusually high levels of calls to a specific destination, so that, if you wish, you can quickly update your configuration to throttle these, and prevent them disrupting other calls. So in conclusion, effective trunk routing is an essential part of providing a high quality, cost-effective service to your users. MetaView Analytics for Trunk Routing delivers powerful and flexible, near real-time analytics 
that allow you to monitor the performance of your outbound trunk routing, identify those aspects that are underperforming, and rapidly identify and troubleshoot issues as they arise. It works alongside but goes beyond traditional statistics and alarms. Alarms can tell you that a lot of calls are failing on a particular trunk group, but analytics can tell you why this has started happening. And analytics allow you to easily pick up more granular issues, like a carrier failing to consistently route calls to a specific destination that wouldn't show up in traditional statistics. It integrates with the MetaView Service Assurance Server to offer a best of both worlds solution, powerful, fast and flexible analytics capabilities with the ability to drill all the way down to individual calls and the wealth of detailed per call diagnostics available in SAS. The MetaView Analytics solution is built on MetaView SAS and Splunk. If you already have these in your network with sufficient spare capacity, then no new servers are required. If you don't yet have Splunk, then it is easy to download, install and configure. For more information on the MetaView Analytics solution, see MetaSwitch Communities for information on availability and licensing, and for installation and configuration procedures. See the SAS Analytics API definition available on MetaSwitch Innovators, or contact your MetaSwitch sales representative.